Psychology Unit 2, The Biological Basis of Behavior. First, we need to talk about the objectives of this unit. So upon completing this unit, we hope that students will be able to identify the parts of the brain, understand and identify the parts of a neuron, understand how our senses collect and interpret information, understand transduction, and understand how we perceive. Biological psychology. So biological psychology, it is the branch of psychology that is concerned with the links between biology and behavior. In 1800, Franz Gall suggested that the bumps of the skull represent mental abilities. His theory, though incorrect, nevertheless proposed that different mental abilities could have a biological basis. In order to understand why we do the things we do, we need to look at the biological aspect. And at the very root of biology of behavior and thought is the neuron. And so first, we will be learning about neural communication. Our nervous system plays a vital role in how we think and feel. And the neuron is the basic building block of the nervous system. It is the nerve cell. So a nerve cell or a neuron consists of many different parts. It consists of a cell body and branching fibers. So here's our cell body. The dendrite fibers receive information from sensory receptors or other neurons and they conduct them toward the cell body. The axon fibers, here's the axon, pass that information along to other neurons or muscle glands. So here are the axon fibers or axon terminals that will pass the information on to the other neuron. So they do this by means of nerve impulses called action potential. These are brief electrical signals that travel down the axon. The messages will travel faster along axons that are covered in a fatty tissue called a myelin sheaf right here. The junction between new ne two neurons is called the synapse. So if we were going to see what a synapse is, we would have a dendrite over here from another neuron. The synapse would be where the two almost connect, but not quite. So let's go over these important parts of the neuron again. We have the dendrite, which is the bushy branching extensions of the neuron that receive messages and conduct impulses towards the cell body. So they are the receivers. The axon, these are the extension of a neuron ending branching and terminal fibers. And through these, um, messages are sent to other neurons or other muscles or glands. So um, the axon is the messenger. The dendrite is the receiver. The myelin sheaf is that fatty layer of cells that segmentally encase the fibers of the neurons. This enables the transmission of the neural impulses to go at a much quicker rate. So action potentials. An action potential is a neural impulse that travels down an axon it's generated by movements of positively charged atoms in and out of channels in the axon's membrane. So basically, a simple way to say this is when an axon potential occurs, a message is sent to neighboring neurons. A synapse is the tiny gap. This is about less than a millionth of an inch wide. Okay, this is the junction between the axon tip of the sending neuron and the dendrite or the cell body of the receiving neuron. So the tiny gap is called the synaptic gap. Okay, so the dendrites and the axons and they, of the two neurons don't quite touch. They're super close, but they don't quite touch. And the neurons send chemical messengers called neurotransmitters across the synaptic gap. So how do neurons communicate? Each neuron is a miniature decision-making device 
reacting to signals that it receives from the other neurons. Most of these signals are excitatory, kind of like pushing on a neuron's gas pedal. Others are inhibitory that are more like pushing on a, its brake. So the threshold, if the excitatory signals of the neuron are more powerful or exceed the inhibitory signals, even by a, just a minute intensity or threshold, the combined signals trigger an action potential. So it's kind of like, so the threshold is the level of stimulation that's required that minimal amount to trigger a neural impulse. It's kind of like the excitatory party animals at a party that want to party all night. They outvote, even if it's by one, that's the threshold, they outvote the inhibitory party poopers, and so the party will continue. So a neuron fires, sending impulses down its axon, carrying information to another cell. So let's talk about all or none response. A neuron's reaction of either, fi of either firing with its full strength response or not firing at all. That's what this is. So a neuron firing doesn't vary in intensity. The neuron's reaction is an all or nothing response. Like a gun, neurons either fire or they don't. So neurotransmitters, these are the chemicals that are released from the sending neuron that travel across the synaptic gap and they bind to the receptor sites on the receiving neurons. So they are the chemicals that communicate information throughout our body. And they transmit signals across the synapse from one neuron to another neuron. So how do neurotransmitters help us? Serotonin, for example, is, uh, its pathways are involved with mood regulation. So serotonin is involved with sleep and mood. So people, when they are depressed, they may not be getting enough serotonin. Oftentimes when people suffer from chronic depression, they are given Prozac. And Pro Prozac, Prozac is a drug that works by keeping the serotonin in the synapse longer, giving it more time to exert its effect. So dopamine, this is a neurotransmitter that is associated with involvement in moving and attention and learning. So a lack or a loss of dopamine can produce, um, of producing neurons, it causes Parkinson's disease. It can cause Parkinson's disease. And so um, the symptoms, some of the symptoms are difficult, difficulty starting and stopping voluntary movements, tremors when the body's resting, a stooped posture, very rigid body, poor balance. If in a dopamine imba imbalance, for example, if there's too much dopamine, it can be associated with schizophrenia. Okay, so we have acetylcholine. Acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter that is found in all motor neurons. It is actually the first neurotransmitter that was discovered. It stimulates muscles to contract, and this includes your heart and your stomach muscles. It is also involved in learning, memory, and its main one is muscle contraction. So an example of a disruption of acetylcholine functioning would be um, certain things block it, such as nerve gases, black widow spider venom, or and this will give us too much acetylcholine, which will result in severe muscle spasms and possibly death. Also, um, Alzheimer's disease, this is a lack of acetylcholine, and so it can also produce the memory loss that they, they actually experience. Endorphins, these neurotransmitters are responsible for controlling pain and pleasure. They're released in response to pain, so you've heard stories and things about people that do amazing things 
or when they have uh, a tragic or a very stressful situation happen, such as this picture of Vietnam, Vietnam soldiers, oftentimes they will be shot and in the heat of the moment and in the stressful event they have so many endorphins that that are released that they don't feel the pain until after the stressful event or the excitement is over. When we are um, involved in rigorous exercise we have a heavy release of endorphins and that's been associated with what we call the runner's high and that's a feeling of euphoria or a very good feeling that people get many times when they are involved with, with rigorous exercise and people can actually become adre um, endorphin junkies where they are kind of addicted to that feeling of the endorphin release. Norepinephrine is a neurotransmitter that is, is associated with our flight or fight impulse. So this one is also associated with physical arousal, learning, and memory. So the physical arousal can be arousal in anger or things like this, or it can also be sexual arousal. And disorders associated with a dis, a, an imbalance in norepinephrine can also um, result in depression. So in summary, let's talk about some of the things that we hopefully have gotten from this little lesson. Neurons are the basic building blocks of the nervous system. When a neuron fires an action potential, the signal travels through the dendrites, axon, and the, and the cell body. Neurons send neurotransmitters across the synapse and then on to the next neuros, neuron's dendrite. Neurotransmitters are chemicals that carry specific messages to the brain that influence our behavior and emotions.